Welcome to N1 Electrical Trade Theory. Now in this module, module four, I'm going to be splitting the videos up into four smaller videos just to make it a little bit easier for us. Now don't forget to like and to share these videos to support this YouTube channel. Now in part one of module four, we'll be taking a look at basic electricity, Ohm's law and Joule's law. Now it's important to note that this module four makes up 30% of the weighting towards the final exam. Now 4.1, basic electricity, protons have a positive charge, neutrons have no charge, electrons have a negative charge. Valence electrons are the electrons that orbit the atom in the outermost orbit. Valence electrons are able to detach themselves when there are small forces of attraction between the valence electrons and the positively charged nucleus. To define current, current is the movement of electrons in a specific direction through a material. Conventional current flow is from positive to negative. Electron flow is from negative to positive. Three forms of matter that is found, we get solids, liquids, and gases. An electrical conductor is a material which permits the flow of electric charges. Some examples of conductors are silver, copper, and aluminium. In terms of the effects that electric current has on a circuit, it has heating, lighting, magnetic, and chemical effects on our electric circuits. To define potential difference, a potential difference is due to a difference in charges between two points and is measured in volts. Now you'll notice here with our voltmeter, it's connected in parallel across the load and is measured in a closed circuit. To define electromotive force, EMF is measured across the ends of a coil across an open circuit. So therefore our voltmeter is connected in parallel across the battery and we have a open circuit. Different sources of EMF are cells, generators, solar energy, heat, and friction. To define resistance, it opposes the flow of current and produces heat. Resistors are devices which offer opposition to the flow of current. There are two main functions of resistors, to limit current flow and also to produce voltage drops in our circuit. To define Ohm's law, if we have a look at the pyramid here, it helps us to not only define Ohm's law, but also helps us with our calculations. We find that current is directly proportional to voltage, but inversely proportional to the resistance while temperature remains constant. For our first calculation for module four, dealing with Ohm's law, a heater element has a resistance of 50 ohms and is connected across a 200 volt supply. Determine the current drawn by this element. So using our pyramid to try and help us work out the unknown value, we've been given a resistance of 50 ohms, a voltage of 200 volts, and the unknown factor is current. So to calculate current, it's the voltage divided by the resistance, and that gives us a current flow of four amps. Power is the rate at which work is done. Now, if we look at our formulas that's available to us on the formula sheet, there is more than one way to calculate power. The units for power is watts, the units for voltage is volts, the units for current is amperes, and the units for ohms is ohms. In the example for to calculate power, in this question it states, calculate the power consumption of a 220 volt electric kettle, which draws five amps when connected to the correct supply. So we've got a voltage of 220 volts, a current flow of five amps, and power is the unknown factor. So to calculate power, it will be the voltage multiplied by the current, and that will give us 1,100 watts. 
Now, for the next section on heat and Joule's law, to define energy, energy is the capacity to do work or to produce heat. Now, to define Joule's law or to state Joule's law, we can help ourselves by using this formula. You'll notice that Q is equal to I squared RT. Q is the heat generated in joules. I is the current in amperes. R is the resistance in ohms. And small letter T is time in seconds. So using this formula, the heat generated is proportional to the square of the current, the resistance, and the time that current flows. Now, just to remind ourselves before we do this next calculation that there are 60 seconds in one minute, 60 minutes in one hour, and to convert hours into seconds, we would multiply by 60 minutes and 60 seconds. Determine the time required to generate 225 kilojoules of heat energy when a current of five amperes flows through the element of an electric kettle. The element has a resistance of 44 ohms. So we notice we've given the heat, which is in joules. Now to convert kilojoules into joules, we multiply by 1000, our current of five amps and a resistance of 44 ohms. So therefore time in seconds is the unknown variable. So in order to get time on its own, it will be the heat generated divided by the square of the current and resistance. The heat generated in the circuit is 225,000 joules divided by 5 squared, which is the current, or we could say 5 times 5, and the resistance of 44 ohms. Therefore, the time is 204,6 seconds. Thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to watch the next part of the series, and don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you.